Good evening, everyone. We're so thankful that you are joining us at Sulphur Springs for our midweek devotion and Bible study. Uh, I apologize that we haven't produced a video on Wednesday night in a couple of weeks. We just uh, had a lot of things going on and just haven't been able to get it together and uh, get it produced and, and uploaded. So we'll try to do better uh, in the future. But I'm excited tonight that we are starting a new study in the book of James. We're going to be uh, going through James, the first chapter, and uh, we'll kind of see from there if we're going to continue in the book of James. But uh, there's a lot of encouragement uh, when we read the book of James. Uh, you know, James is a great teaching book, uh, both for new believers and for mature Christians. Uh, you know, James was the half-brother of Jesus, and uh, church history tells us that uh, he really wasn't converted to following Christ until after the resurrection. But he instantly became a leader uh, in the first church and was actually the pastor of the first Christian church in Jerusalem. So as he writes this letter, it's written not only to believers, uh, Christian believers all around, but uh, to the church. It was one of the later books that was written, and therefore uh, sometimes it's easier to relate to since it was written by a pastor and written uh, to the church. So uh, I hope that uh, studying the book of James uh, is valuable to you, and I hope that it's something that, um, that you will enjoy. So let's jump into the scripture tonight. And in the book of James in chapter 1, and this is the English Standard Version. It says, um, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So when we read this, uh, you know, James refers to himself in verse 1 as a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's interesting that he did, not, um, he did not discuss or talk about being the half-brother of Jesus. And I've always found that interesting, but the truth is that uh, James felt it uh, a more significant role, a more important role, that he would be a servant to the Savior than even a blood brother of Jesus Christ. So uh, that kind of shows you the mentality and uh, kind of where... Uh, where his heart and his mind were uh, when he was writing this. But he says, to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Now, the 12 tribes, of course, he's referring to the Jewish people, the Hebrews, the, the descendants of Abraham there. And uh, when he talks about the dispersion, he could be talking about those who had been dispersed all the way back to uh, when people were taken into captivity into Babylon. Uh, back in Daniel's day, you know, not all of those people returned to Jerusalem. So he could have been writing those letters or it could be that he was talking to those who had kind of uh, spread out and ran for cover uh, after Jesus' um, crucifixion. You know, many of the Christians in the first church were persecuted, so they had to travel to different lands. So it could be that he was writing uh, to those as well. But either way, uh, he addresses his letter to those, uh, those Jews who had been part of the dispersion. Now, here's where we get into the real lesson tonight. Uh, James says in, in uh, verse 2 of chapter 1, Count it all joy, my brothers, uh, when you meet trials of various kinds. So, you know, this has always been difficult to kind of wrap our minds around, uh, to count it all joy when we are facing trials. Now, I don't believe that James is really uh, telling us that we're wrong if we're not excited about suffering. Uh, you know, I don't know of anyone who's going to say, great, flat tire, uh, or, or, you know, I'm so thankful the boss crawled me again. Uh, it's not that kind of joy. So let's break down kind of what the verse says, and let's look at what each word means, and I think we'll be able to gather the, the true meaning of what James was trying to say. This word count uh, in the Greek, uh, it means to lead or to command. So when James is saying count it all joy, he's saying command yourself, command your spirit toward this. So he says count and it all means the whole or every part. So command every part of what you're seeing. And, and then the joy means a cheerfulness or a calm delight. So when you put all that together, what James is trying to say is uh, make yourself see the whole picture so that you can see the good that God is trying to bring about. Or, or maybe even in, in our terms today, in a term that would be relevant in contemporary language, he'd be saying, look on the bright side, okay? Uh, when you're facing these trials, when you're facing these various uh, adversarial conditions, uh, look for something positive. Keep your mindset on something good. That's what James is getting across 
um, because this word trials that he's talking about can mean some type of adversity or even some type of test. Now, none of us like to be tested. None of us like to experience difficulties that cause us to uh, have to step out and rely on our faith because we aren't sure about what's going to happen. But I believe the biggest trouble that we struggle with as Christians when it comes to testing of our faith or trials, uh, I think we lose our perspective on what God is trying to accomplish. Um, you know, God is working for our good. That's what the Bible tells us, that God works for good uh, for those who love him and are called to his purpose. So we know that God is working for good, but when we face a trial and things don't go our way, it's amazing how oftentimes we blame God. Now, we won't come out and say we're blaming God. We won't come out and say we're mad or we're let down with God. But sometimes we set an expectation for what we want and our plan and what we want to have happen. And when that's not God's will and that's not God's plan, then suddenly God didn't meet our expectations. So now we're disappointed in God instead of recognizing that maybe our expectations were not in God's will at all. Maybe that was something that we wanted to see happen. Uh, oftentimes, I believe Christians will say, well, God, you didn't let me overcome this. Uh, God, you didn't answer my prayer. Well, I will challenge you to say, you know, many times God does answer our prayer, and sometimes his answer is no. You know, sometimes maybe you receive that answer, and it just wasn't what you were looking for. Um, so why does God allow trials in our life? See, God doesn't test us because he wants us to fail. God tests us because he wants us to overcome the trial that we are facing so that our faith grows. You know, God doesn't test you to see if you have faith in him. God is omniscient, right? Uh, he already knows if you have faith in him or not. So when God is testing us or when God is allowing us to be tested or facing a trial, the test is not so that God can look down and go, oh, I see, they had faith. No, the test is so that we can see that we have faith. God already knows if we have faith or not. But oftentimes it takes that test, that struggle, uh, it takes that trial for us to step out and trust God, for us to realize how faithful God is and how much faith we have in God. So, um, you know, if, if God allows a trial in our life, if we face this test and we fail, over and over again, I have experienced that sooner or later we will face that trial again. You know, there are people who continually face trials and they back away from them and they don't rely on faith. And then they kind of leave discouraged and then pretty soon they face that same trial again. And God is not doing that so he can continue to beat that person down. God is doing that so that we will trust in him and we will overcome that trial and we will see that God has given us the strength that we need to overcome. So oftentimes that's that's what's happening. God wants us to be able to overcome and trust him in faith. So we get to verse 3. And so let's go back to verse 2. James says, count it all joy, brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. How? How does the testing of our faith produce steadfastness? Well, you know, when we trust God and when we see his faithfulness, then we find it easier to trust him the next time we're facing a trial. We find it easier to put our trust and our hope in him the next time we're, we're facing some difficult circumstance. So when we get to verse 4, it says, And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So when we fully trust God and we lean on God and we see that... Um, that God has worked in our favor, then we can experience this completeness, this wholeness uh, that James is talking about here in Christ. Not in ourself, not in our own power, our own works, but in Christ and in Christ alone. So when we face difficult circumstances, we must ask these two questions. Am I being obedient? Am I really following God's will? Because if we're not being obedient, if we're living in sin, or if we're, we're not following after God's will, we're trying to do our own thing, then many times what we're facing as a trial might not be something for us to overcome at all. It could be conviction from the Holy Spirit trying to get us to turn and go a different direction. But if we are following God, and we are trusting in Him, and we're still facing this trial, 
then we have to ask, God, what is it that you're trying to do in my character? God, what is it that you're trying to do in my surroundings? What is it that you're trying to bring about in my life? What is it that I can do uh, to be obedient uh, and overcome in this trial of faith? So we must seek what God is looking to do in our life. Remember, God is working for our good. God is working to bring about the best in our life, but we have to trust Him. Uh, we have to be willing uh, to trust in Him. So even in our trials, even in our disappointment, uh, if we are looking, we can see God's faithfulness and our faith can be strengthened. So I hope that this encourages you to get into the book of James, uh, to read and to study, uh, maybe find you a commentary on it, uh, maybe, maybe just pray over it and let God kind of uh, show you what it is that he's teaching through the book of James. Uh, a lot of practical uh, teaching in this book, so I hope that you'll continue to join us each week and uh, maybe be strengthened by, uh, by some of the things that, uh, that God is doing uh, through his word. So I hope you're having a blessed week. If you don't have a place where you normally attend worship, we would love for you to be with us at Sulphur Springs. Uh, our services are at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, we generally produce uh, a video of our services that plays the following week, so you can uh, be on the lookout for that on our Facebook page at Sulphur Springs Church or even on our YouTube uh, channel. You can find us there and uh, you can check out our services here at Sulphur Springs. So if there's anything that we can do to help you, uh, we would love to reach out to us here at the church at 333-3200, or uh, you can reach me on Facebook or Instagram or um, uh, however uh, your means of communication is. We would love to be able to, uh, to help you out if we can. God bless you. Uh, I hope you have a blessed week, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.